Welcome to Drinking Bros, presented by BlackRifleCoffee.com. Oh. Yeah, baby. Oh, How are you, kids? You're fired up over there. Good, ready to go. Oh shit, man! I, I am. I'm right as rain. I feel really great today. We got Max Martini on the show today. You guys have re- requested him for a long time. One of the finest actors we have. Also does a lot for veterans. And you, how many war movies do you think you've done, Max? Oh man, uh, it, I would say half a dozen, maybe. Really? I'm guessing. Shit. Maybe. I think. I think maybe yeah. a little less. Maybe five. Could you list them? Uh, Saving Private Ryan. The Great yep. Raid. Uh, does Captain Phillips count? I don't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, 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 yeah. I mean, we sent, we sent guys yeah. in, right? So yeah, Captain yeah. Phillips. Uh, 13 hours. So there's five. And uh, I feel like there's another one. And then Sergeant Will Gardner. I just saw the trailer for this a Will few Gardner, weeks ago. So, yeah, so there's yeah. six. And then uh, and then Clayne and I did a, uh, a sci-fi military film, which was... Uh, was that what was it? It was called like uh, yeah, spectral. spectral. Was that, what, uh, was yeah. that that's it? Was that something like was that on, por- on YouTube yeah, or you porn? porn? Just you guys? Uh, porn? It's, just yeah, yeah, it was just <laughs> us. I mean, we, we were in fatigue, so uh, you know. So that makes it normal. right, right. <laughs> it's a little indie film we knocked out. <laughs> right. Not a big deal. You better, you better hurry. You got to <laughs> dig deep, but you can find it. It's out there. I remember when that that movie got shot. It was a, a, a massive budget. It wasn't like forty million dollars, and it was supposed to yeah, be I think this. It was more actually. Oh my god! I think it was about. Seventy million dollars. It was. Uh, yeah, that's that's it. Can you, yes. can, is this yeah. movie still out? Yeah, it's on and Netflix. It was, oh, it was supposed to be. They don't. Yeah. It was supposed to be in three D, right? Power. Actually, sometimes they do. You know what movie you can't find anywhere online? Super Mario Brothers. I don't know. Oh Christ, alive, Jared! <laughs> it's not a movie. <laughs> what is this? That, yeah, that and Mel Gibson's uh, movie Inca or Mayan. What is it? The Mayan movie? Oh, Apocalypse. No, yeah, I'm can't a big fan of that. Anywhere on the internet. Really? Yeah. yeah. No, you can't. And well, you you can't you can't I buy a DVD Blu-ray, of it or something. So. Yeah, I was gonna say no. Uh, the Blu-ray is going for like five thousand dollars. It's some crazy collectible or something. Wow. Seriously? Why? Yeah. Yeah. What did What did they do with that? Did he just pull it? Uh, I, don't I don't know. Look, it, it was a great movie, but it happened after um, he he got in that shit in the back of the the cop car. So. I'll tell you, know. you a movie that you can find that I watched again last night. Oh yeah, uh, which I do think is probably one of my favorite movies of Moana? all time. No, oh Inglori- Moana, Inglorious Bastards. Bastards, so good. Ah, <laughs> uh, right? big fan. Yep. That has like five iconic scenes in it that are just they're unfucking believable, man. They they like you can watch and rewatch and watch and rewatch yeah. that bar scene is so with good. them in the base in the basement bar. Is so fucking good when he discovers the uh, the British, you know, yeah. uh, knock or whatever you want to classify that dude, and they've got their guns under the table. I can watch and rewatch that fucking scene over and over. We were we were with a guy last night that did that used to do work for Robert Rodriguez, and he was telling us stories about that movie, like how uh, Robert's daughter is in the opening scene. She's one of the girls running. Oh really? Yeah. He's from Texas, oh, really? right? What's that? Robert is he from Rodriguez? Texas? Yeah. He lives in Austin. Oh, he does. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah big, big Austin guy. Max, uh, you ever read one of uh, Tarantino's scripts? Uh, I, uh, I, f- I, I must have at some point. Why? Well, the, re- the reason the yeah. reason I ask is Inglorious Bastards is was probably the most well written script I've ever read in Hollywood, mm. uh, like of all time. Wow. He he writes them like a novel, and all the assistants in town. Uh, whenever his scripts, scripts leak, they take the day off and everybody goes home and, and read them because it's it's like reading the greatest book you'll ever read. And Evan, to your point about how great that movie is, that was all on the page. So there was not one of those scenes that was later on that was just like, oh, man, let's try something wacky out. No, I mean, he had that scripted down to the seconds where you're like, holy shit. That's interesting. Um, you know, uh, here's here's kind of a cool uh, f- fact. Uh on Captain Phillips, uh, Paul Greengrass. I mean, we improvised most of that film. Really? Yeah, really? and he and that's kind of his thing, you know. And was that was Ray Care? Was he doing the the uh, some of the? Yeah, he was. He was. Yeah. Uh, he was on it. Yeah. 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 So all of us worked together, like Ray Care Bear. And, yeah, Care yeah, Bear. Yeah, yeah. yeah, he's a good dude. He is a good dude. Yeah, yeah he's yeah. fun. And because uh, he was with uh, Tig and a lot of those other guys, we all worked together with, in the same uh, office. Yeah. Yeah. Dirty, How'd you like working with Tom Hanks on that? Is the hype real? Well, I did uh, 
Private Ryan with him, so I knew him from that. But and right. and oddly, on Captain Phillips, we never because he's in the the lifeboat. Uh, we never actually shot together. Really? Really? Uh, yeah. So I saw him right at the beginning of filming. And he, he came up to me and he was like, listen, uh, dude, like, there's no script. Like, get ready. Like, you're going to be improvising everything. And I went, oh, my God. And then, <laughs> and then I didn't see him again. I saw him at the, at the uh, premiere. Really? Yeah. What was, it, what was your favorite movie? And, and not necessarily watching it, but, but to be part of, you know, the whole team and the crew. Well, you know, 13 Hours was was uh, pretty special for me, um, just in that those guys were with us, right. and I, I loved uh, them being there, and I loved, you know, being able to collaborate, mm-hmm. you know, and having them, uh, you know, oversee everything. So, uh, you know, and, and, and the story is, is kind of tragic, and, and yeah. so, you know, when, when I have the opportunity to be part of something that's, you know, a, a, a retelling of a, a, a small piece of history. It's, uh, it's pretty special. Private Ryan was the same way. Yeah, so right. we, got the, we got the skinny on the beach landing from Dale Die and yeah. how much it went into getting that. So what was it like on your end for that? Because he, you know, Dale told, told him, run every camera. We're getting one take on this. Yeah. Like, Go <laughs> well. I so they sh- they had shot that before I showed up. So uh, my f- I, I first saw that at, at the premiere. Oh, which, really? Yeah, and oh, I was like, like, Oh my god! god. <laughs> like never <laughs> seen anything Incredible. like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah, I mean, just mind blowing. And and really uh, reinvented, you know, the way that, that we make mo- war yeah. movies, right? And the way we shoot them. Yeah, yeah but that's uh, when he experimented with uh, making the shutter speed faster. To yeah. give you a more like almost stressful feeling, yeah, yeah. As, as the camera's moving, yeah, and it's been imitated so many times, well, you know, <laughs> it became the standard after that. Yeah, right. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Go ahead. By the way, you were great in Thirteen Hours, man. I lo- I love that film. I thought you were fantastic in it, and Thanks. um, uh, you're one of those actors who's just great in every movie they're in. Like if you're in it. I, I, I'm at least along for the ride. You know what I'm saying? No matter who it is, like you're one of those guys, and your voice right now, you're halfway to a Sam Elliott. Has anybody told you that? <laughs> yeah, that's what uh, I, I am in the, the the My Little Pony movie. Uh, my voice as a voice guy, voice. Actor. <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Oh, I won't. But you've got kids. Like no, you know, the- you know what's funny? I was on a plane, and and this woman. Uh, came up to me and she was like, oh, you know, hey, I used to watch The Unit all the time and, you know, I loved that show and blah, blah, blah. And then as we t- we took off and she turned to me at one point and went, you know, have you have you thought about doing voiceover? And I went, yeah, you know, I've got a voiceover agent and I've been trying to get out on it and stuff. And she kept whacking the guy next to her and pointing at me. And about two weeks later, I got a uh, an offer for My Little Pony and I was like, I... I-, I- I have to do this because I have to put it on my resume in between all the war films and, you know, yeah. trip all my buddies up. But still, it's, it's e- e- <clears> war you film, go into war a film, studio, war yeah. film, My Little my Pony. Little pony. Right. Yeah, but war you go film, into a studio film. and speak. Like, that's easy work. Yeah, it's a great that's, that's gig. Not, yeah, it's a great gig. doesn't want to do that? It's a great gig. How did you, yeah, I'd rather it, it, dig a ditch. It's really good. How did you do the song? Like, what, what had happened right before? How, how, how did I do the, oh. Uh, yeah, that's actually good. So, so uh, me and a Marine buddy uh, had been out drinking, and uh, which is unusual for me. Shot. And, uh, Huge shot. Yeah. No, we Huge didn't drink at all shot. last night, yeah, yeah. We didn't drink at all. At Seriously? All. No. Huh. We no. went hard. Oh. I feel great. Oh, good. Uh, anyhow, so we, uh, he had signed me up for a bull riding competition, <laughs> and the, the, the fucking bull went left, and my bicep uh, r- tore off the bone. Shot into my shoulder, and I had gotten the surgery right before I had to go in and and uh, sing for My Little Pony, and and uh, <laughs> so I'm scared to say I haven't seen it yet, actually, but oh. I've heard the song. I did it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Your kids are going to be stoked, though, that you're yeah, in My yeah, Little yeah. Pony. Yeah. Well, I got two boys that probably so won't see it, but yeah. It. yeah. Well, you never know. You never but, know. Yeah. 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 We're we're gender neutral on this show. 2019. <laughs> right. Yeah. Totally yeah, we, kidding. We don't assume no, general. Or I a, I finally gender. met officially a a a, a, a sexuality fluid person, a, a guy that's like ah hey, you know whatever or you know they go both ways. Bye. You know 
of actual by dude. That's the way that I classified you for the last four years. I've said it multiple <laughs> times. Yeah, but this guy's you actually get up done and it. brush your teeth in front of that person every three or four days. No, I met somebody that actually does it. Oh, oh, no. uh, like a real person, right. a real human walking yeah. around. You, you shook another person's hand like you. Well, it just was like, yeah, yeah. So you got a girlfriend or anything? Right. He's, ah, you know, I dated guys for a while. I dated girls for a while. I'm like, how was that? He's like, it's like just having a buddy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah just so a buddy that a you buddy. fuck, you know? Yeah. 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 Right. <laughs> that's what I call a perfect world. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's your, that's yours and Logan's. Hey, man. Listen. Hey, man, let's go do some deadlifts, hit the range, maybe uh, watch an epic war movie, and then bang. And just fuck blast, one, blast let's each other's on, assholes. Let's put on some straight porn and fuck each other. Perfect day. <laughs> <laughs> There's got to be a couple out there that does that. No, they have to bros. do it during straight porn. <laughs> <laughs> you you think there's two dudes out there who are just beef fries hanging out, uh, jacking off together, like, and then you know just Wasn't going that the Beatles. Yeah, back yeah. in the day it was, but we don't have that anymore. That's like, <laughs> I mean, that's that's like, uh, if there isn't, I'll lose hope in the world. You know, like that's what keeps me going. <laughs> that's what keeps thread. me going, man. You know, like that's the, the little things. It's the light on the, yeah, yeah, the yeah. top of the mountain. Like there's just two fucking guys up there just living the dream. Yeah. It's like, fuck yeah. yeah. This is fucking awesome. Yeah. You know, I got everything I want, dude. You, Man, you make me better. You make me better at shooting. You make me a better <laughs> fucking deadlifter. Make me a better lover. You, you complete me. I love you, bro. You, you help complete me. I love me. you. Yeah. Help me mow the lawn. <laughs> yeah. Like, I'm mowing the lawn. You're weed whacking. You We're clean. done in 20 minutes. You clean up after yourself. There's no drama. Shit, man. I love you. No, but seriously, I love you, dude. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Hey, let's watch some straight porn and dig each other out. Oh, God. Let's think I, about girls. Don't and ruin fun. it. What? This is about real love. This is honestly about like a broke back mountain type scenario, but they don't have to hide it. They're just good fishing buddies. That's it. M Mike and I have no idea how to chime in on this. We're, all, <laughs> we're trying to figure Max, it out. Max, holding on. Let yeah, me ask yeah. you if you, you would have gotten broke back, would you have said yes or no? Oh, my. Oh, that's I a dare, really that, yeah, funny. I, yeah, I, 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 would, I would have passed on that. But, mm -hmm. I, you know, yeah, yeah. And, Four million. And, you know, nothing, uh, uh, you know, I'm, I'm indifferent. But eight the million? Uh, eight million. For $8 million? Yeah. No, I, I, I 12. Come on. That, that Come on where, where's every, everybody's got a number? 12. Yeah. 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 Everybody's got a number. You're What's your number? I can't. Active. I can't. You're going to no. go like, up for an award, obviously, because you're. You're, you're going to be lauded by uh, all the fucking Fruit Loops, just like, oh my God. Yeah. So I'd do brave. it for 100. 100 so mil? Brave. No, 100,000. 100,000? Yeah. 100 it. bucks. Really? You'd do it for 100 bucks. I mean, is it, is it, <laughs> is it the shot actual like, Brokeback Mountain? Am I in the real Brokeback Mountain with Toby Yeah, Toby McGuire? You would do it for 100 bucks. I'd do it for a couple hundred bucks. Toby McGuire. Is not in that movie, oh, but yeah. Toby McGuire yeah. in a oh. shot of like backwashed <laughs> fireball. I mean, if they just, if honestly, I'd do it for free if they just let me eat at the at the main cast catering. Michael, yeah. let you my, do that. He, he can arrange it. Yeah. Who are they? Do, it was, it was, uh, yeah. Who is the? Who are the guys in that? I mean, I know Ledger, but who's the other dude? What's his name? It's uh, Jake Gyllenhaal. Jake, oh, yeah. Jake come Gyllenhaal. on, man. Uh, Toby McGuire. Fuck you guys. And, and no, no, no. He's cute. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's exactly. cute. Yeah, like, exactly. Yeah, yeah. with Heath Ledger. Get the fuck And hey, look. I, I think I think we're all forgetting about the the real star of that movie, Randy Quaid. You remember Quaid was in that? Randy? <laughs> I don't remember him. Was he in that? Yeah, he yeah, was, I, yeah. I didn't see it, but what, yeah, was he I've in there? Seen the movie. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, Randy Quaid was the. Uh, um, he was the ranch seven hand. Seven point yeah. seven on IMDb. Yeah, that's, that's a, and and Spectral got a six point eight. What is? Uh, are we? Uh, wow. Do we have a clip? Close. Oh, look at him. Oh. Yeah, there you go. Yeah. I didn't. So I didn't understand. I. I when I I watch the movie because you know I'm fine with my sexuality it doesn't like it's no 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 difference to me right it's a movie like it was it was actually a very aesthetically oh, when you're looking at the mountains and I mean it's it's a fucking cool it's movie like a river right? runs through it but yeah. it wasn't incredible like it wasn't like blown away by the acting of either one of the actors it got a lot of hype <clears throat> because uh those guys were both allegedly straight and uh and you know and they made took this bit daring you know opportunity to uh shock hollywood i think is but I guess, you, what do you think is from a producer's standpoint yeah i i think the it's beautifully shot he's an amazing yeah. cinematographer an yeah. amazing director 
but at the end of the day, it's the story is kind of, you know, it's just kind of it, flat. It, yeah. Like you know, it's going to happen. Exactly, you do. Like yeah, like just, you can cowboys start it in know, the beginning, and you're around. like, okay, got it. But so what, you I couldn't guess my have question, that movie now, that this day and age, though, because it would it'd be matter. boring. Yeah, nobody exactly cares right. anymore. Okay. Right. I mean, if you remember back to the first season of X Files, one of the one of the episodes was wrapped around a congressman that was secretly gay, and the whole thing was they were blackmailing him. It's like, you don't do that. You can't do that anymore. Now no, it's, Tuesday. Tuesday. it's Tuesday. You're, now it's cool to be gay. Now <laughs> it's going to be like, it'll be a straight congressman pretending to be gay so he can get more votes. Yeah. yeah and then they'll be blackmailing right. him because they know Have you straight. registered that story? Because I'd love to that's do that. that. <laughs> <laughs> but my, my question for, the, for you in that is, is, do you think that it's acceptable to get awards specifically around the, the, the movie because you took a chance. Yeah. You, because yes. I look at it on the flip side. Okay. Like we took a chance doing like it, it, it was really hard for us to get the money because mm -hmm. we were giving 30% to veterans charities. Right. So we, and we stuck to that. So we 50 that at chance. the time when at we the, started, yeah, exactly. we wanted to give 50. Right. I wanted to just keep that under the, Oh, the DL. Okay. Yeah, no, 30. <laughs> uh, but so we took that chance and we had to pay the price for that on some things. And we had, you know, we had half the money and didn't have the money and all this stuff. And so I think anytime you can figure out a way to make a movie and take a chance, then you get what you deserve gotcha. on, on, on the positive and the negative. I got gotcha. you. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. Yeah. yeah. Um, but, but I do think that like there's a, there's a you know, uh, uh, Hollywood has a tendency to kind of the, the minute somebody does something daring, you know, they're nominated. Or the minute somebody, you know, some Australian actor comes over and attempts an American accent, which just don't get me started. But, right. they, oh, yeah. but, but it, everybody goes, oh, my God, he's amazing. He, you know, so. The, that doesn't make it, sense to me. I've thought about that, too. I'm like. No. All it is is a lot of listening you're and studying. A, and, uh, yeah. You're an right. Australian. It's not like you're. You're Chinese learning I, a completely different right, language. Right, right, you're yeah, right, washing right. away I, like you're Australian. I Are you spent, fucking serious? An hour That's like, yesterday. I, I know people in Mississippi that have a, a, a harder <laughs> accent. <laughs> to, <laughs> you know, to, to, to learn. I don't understand. I'm like, I, oh, my God, man. This fucking Australian's amazing. I, I spent an hour yesterday watching Norsemen trying to, trying to, to master that one because I think it's funny. What are you talking about? Their accent. Norsemen? Their accent. Yeah. Have you yeah. seen it yet, Ross? Yeah, yeah. How good is I that? I haven't seen it. I want to see it so oh bad. Oh, oh boy. Yeah. It's, it is, it's, that, it, that's the Paul Greengrass. It's next, yeah. next yeah. Dude, level. So good. Wow. Yeah. I, turned, I finally turned JT on to something. Yeah, yeah. That's he got me on that. No, you got, you got me a Patriot, too. Yeah, yeah. yeah. That, that, that's that's two fantastic. really good ones. But Norseman yeah. is just like, you're taking, you're taking super troopers in the office and merging it with Vikings. Mm. Yeah, that's. <laughs> yeah. It's, <laughs> you no, know, it's, you're, you're right. It's so, good. So tell us. It's about really your, good. So tell us about your 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 movie that you guys. When did you guys finish? We finished, when did you guys uh, finished shooting last June, and okay. then we had a uh, post, and then we sold the movie. What like two months ago? Yeah, two or three. Yeah. And uh, this is um, th and this is the new one that comes out on the eleventh, correct? Yeah, of called January. Sergeant Will Gardner. And uh, Will you, pull and you, di you directed this. You directed this as well, right, Matt? Yeah, you know, here's what happened. So we initially we had we had a different director. We had a different star. Uh, we had a different DP. And because our film was contingent on the weather, uh, we had these sort of windows of opportunity to film every year. And, and when we finally got the money, uh, no, nobody was Will available. Will you pull it up, Dave? So I ended up directing and starring, uh, and I found an amazing DP in, in New Mexico. But it, but I, you know, it was meant to happen that way, and and I'm I'm really happy it did happen that way because I got to tell my story and not you know a version of it. So and this is something that Max has been living with for the first time we met was almost a decade ago. Yeah, and uh, and it just the the evolution of the script, and and nobody could have told it. Yeah, well, I mean, Ross, it was re it, like Mike said, it was really tough to get uh, to get finance, you know, financiers in interested because right. uh, we wanted to give away, you know, half of the profits at the time without a write off or without, you know, so right. sure, uh, yeah, financiers usually lose their shit over that. By yeah, the way. I mean, by the way, yeah, it's it's difficult without giving away to charity and and you know so uh and and trying to find people in la was like trying to find a needle in a haystack so we had to go we went to we came to texas 
Uh, we went to New- Louisiana. Oh we have some some pretty good, uh, pretty wacky stories trying to hunt down. We literally supporters. traveled around the whole country looking for money. Yeah, like we'd find ourselves in Shreveport or or yeah, in New Orleans at this meeting that all of a sudden would turn into them asking us for money. We're like, no, no, no. We we're wanted- here to ask you, you for, for money. money. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the subject line of my email. Was misleading. Yeah. I want to <laughs> ask you for money. <laughs> that that's that's always how it turns out. But you guys have a powerhouse cast here. I'm, I mean, I'm looking at the roster here. You got yeah, uh, Dermot Dave. Mulrooney, um, Elizabeth Rom. You've got uh, Robert Patrick. You got Gary Sinise in this dude. Sinise is amazing. Yeah, how great is that guy? And, and what does he do for the veteran community? Because look, has he's, he been on like the show? Everywhere. Not yet. No, you, you, you've got to get him on the show. Absolutely. I, I mean, he's uh, what well, he's he's one of the nicest guys you'll ever meet, and and uh, and does more for veterans than anybody that I know. I mean, he really has dedicated his life to his foundation, you know, which uh, encompasses encompasses uh, a few different organizations. But part, you know, he builds ha- homes and gives homes to veterans that you know are disabled. He he he. Uh, Outfits homes for disabled veterans that you know need wheelchair access. His band plays uh, for veterans. He's just and he's got different organizations that he wor- that the oh, foundation works. Robert Patrick, with. yeah, he's always he's always ar- seems to be around the veteran community. Yeah, he's a he's yeah a he he actually called. Uh, I talked to him a couple weeks ago. He he wants us to come out. He owns a Harley dealership in yeah. Santa Clara. Yeah, um, seriously. What? So he, what are yeah, we doing? He there? wants us to come out and shoot the show there, uh, Jared. I'm in. I just, I, yeah, I just talked to him two weeks ago. He's a great guy, and it's same thing, man. Um, he's you know his passion is is helping the veteran community. He's a big fan of the show, and uh, and he hit me up. So when I saw him on, in your movie, Max, it wasn't surprising because he does you know every veteran movie he can. Yeah. I know Sinise does. Um, how did you get Dermot Mulrooney though? Well, he and I had done a series together, so we were buddies. I mean, I, I called in, you know favors across the board man i mean we 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 crammed a 10 million dollar movie into 2.3 you know so we had for 2.3 we we shot in la albuquerque baltimore dc we took a splinter unit across Across the country country. we got all these stars yeah i mean and we had you know blew up steady cams and cranes and drones and two cameras and like it was a it was a full operation but uh you know, but the the thing that was that was so beautiful is that when we were casting and meeting these actors, you know, everyone uh, so passionately wanted to be involved because of uh, the veteran uh, give back, mm-hmm. and uh, uh, which was refreshing because you know I think when people think of Hollywood, they think that it's just a city of non supporters, and and. You know, I, there are people out there that, you know, that uh, care for our military. Uh, mm-hmm. It's, you know, what's what narrows it down are the people that actually get involved in, in, in trying to do something, you know, to give back. But uh, but anyway, they were all very passionate about the story and, and it, it made for a good product. You know, I think that's that, awesome. I think the yeah. thing that's always like, <clears throat> it's not like I have a lot of experience with it, but I think it's the it's the. Um, it's the faux support, right? That's because you know you have these a lot, and when I say a lot, not everybody, obviously, because we know that it can't be. It's not statistically possible for everybody, but there's this veneer where people are like, "Thank you so much." It's like, yeah, but we're trying to get some shit done. So the way right. that, the way that you can thank me is by you want to help. Yeah. Oh no, 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 no! I don't uh, want to do that. I'll mm. get with you guys. Definitely though. Here's my no, because when hey, we were right. when we were crowdfunding for range get 15, with my assistant. he was on a film and sent us sent us a video to help promote it. Yeah. Well, you know, so here's so here's the point. Like, you know, as an actor, as a musician, as mm-hmm. you know, a performer, you have you know all the eyes and ears of of you know this this broad audience. Like, all you have to do is turn up to an event. Like, that's the minimum amount of support. But it takes nothing. You know, right. it's a good time. You get to hang out with great people and show your face because your face inspires people to give because it it, it 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 adds some glitz to the you know to the event and they see that you're involved and you right. know and it's just and it know. changes people's lives i mean you have veterans and soldiers come up and see max at, at an event 
their day has or, and hopefully their month has changed because you've seen that hey you you get me you understand me yeah you know my suffering is not in vain but i love and that I and I, lo- I love being part of that stuff you know and and uh and, and then the opposite end of the spectrum is get your hands dirty and you know get out and actually do some work you know now, how'd you get into the uh like i know you've been acting forever but we're when i say forever like what made that decision forever. Uh, for you, is it something you you started? Did you start like in drama when you were in school, and then make the transition later? Or? Well, what happened is uh, my mother, who's from Texas, mm-hmm. uh, was in law enforcement, and uh, when she split with my dad, she remarried uh, an actor, director, writer. Wow! And uh, and when he was making films, he would throw me in as a kid and go, "Hey, you right. run over there, and, you know, say this, and you know." I'll give you a hundred bucks, go say this, you know, whatever. And, uh, and so I think, you know, I was introduced to the world early on and then I went to college for something else and then I had to pay for college. So I got back into acting to pay for college and, and then I just never, I never went back. But, uh, but you know, I love it. I I really love directing. I loved, uh, that probably more because, uh, I felt like I was exercising different parts of my brain. I mean, you know, so um yeah because you have control over posts and and the edits and all that shit and usually as an actor you know you leave it up to somebody else and then oftentimes they've taken a take you hated or an angle you didn't like uh with this you know it's all on you and you got to do the entire thing right um so yeah i I would imagine that's different was it was it different for you working on walker texas ranger though that was different. <laughs> I forgot to mention that. Wow. That's one of my favorite roles. Uh, the date rapist on Walker, Texas Seriously? Ranger. I hope you've seen the episode because it's, it's really some of my better work. Uh, you know, I, I did uh, 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 Chuck Norris kicks me in the, well, first of all, you know, his, remember his partner? Yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. He and I rehearsed a fight scene for an entire day. And got all this choreography down and went to the set and and he smoked me twice so hard uh, and dropped me. And I was like, really? All right. All right. And so anyway, that 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 was uh, that was a weird. uh, Hopefully he's not watching the show. But how is Chuck? Give you Uh, how is Chuck? Chuck uh, Chuck kicked me and they put me on the back of a of a pickup truck and made me jump off the pickup truck as if he had like front kicked me, you know, six feet up into the air and <laughs> pretty funny. Uh, People yeah. aren't using a lot of kicks these days anymore, you know, no. I, uh, more, more uh, rear naked choke holds yeah. and arm bars. I do. Yeah. He's if I were you, I would just, I would use that as your only scene on your reel as, as the date rapist from yeah. Walker. Just Texas send that right out. <laughs> And then just say, hey, I'm ready to party. Because, I mean, look, you do that. You, then you then you go on to Nash Bridges, which I'm a huge Nash fan. Oh, shit. <laughs> are you, Wait, you did Nash Bridges. Are you on my IMDb? He doesn't even know. Nash he doesn't fan. even know. I did Nash Bridges. Max, this, is, really? all by, this wow. is all by heart. I study up on you. I'm Obviously, sweating, I study Jesus. up on all of our guests. Oh, yeah. God, Big Nash fan. Because you were Larry Fortina in that. Yes, and, uh, I was. It, it changed. <laughs> Changed my life. Changed lives. Like, <laughs> it changed lives everywhere, Ross. I, I still yeah. get recognized from that fan mail. But but yeah. the, the the hilarious thing is this, right? So you you go from Walker, Texas Stranger to Nash Bridges, and then literally to fucking Saving Private Ryan. Yeah. Did you, you ever think that was possible? No. In fact, I, I went into that audition thinking I'm never gonna get this, you know, and and. Uh, and went in, and and honestly, this is this was a big lesson in acting for me because I went in and I didn't do anything, and I don't know if it was like laziness or if it was sort of a, a lack of interest because I knew that you know there were seven thousand other dudes trying you know fighting for this role, but uh, but I ended up getting it, and you know, and I thought, fuck, maybe I should just stop trying. And, you know, just go into these auditions and just, you know, say the fucking words, you know. And so the minute I started doing that, uh, I started working a lot and uh, in big things. So it was a big, you know, I think as an actor, as like a young actor, you like you go in and you want to hit a home run. You know, with every audition, you want it to be your Oscar moment. And, you know, even if it's like, 
you know, a scene of, you know, two dudes having coffee, you're still going to win an Oscar from it. You know what I mean? So you just try anyway. So, so I, that was a, it was a turning point for me, I think as a, as an actor, but yeah, I ended up getting it and, and, uh, and got out of the Nash Bridges, Walker, Texas Ranger world. Because you were Private uh, Umpum in that, right? No, I was uh, Corporal Henderson. That was was Private (laughs) Umpum. That was so funny. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 I I was the guy he didn't get the the, the magazines to. (laughs) (laughs) That's the most hated character Uh, in film history. So many memes and gifts about it. Like, oh, my God. (laughs) Never ending. Yeah, yeah. Well, the other the other character I always reference is uh, from Band of Brothers. There was the captain. Um, uh, uh, or, the the Oval, dude, or starts with O. No, the dude that played in Friends. Yeah. What's his name? Uh, oh, uh, David, David Schwimmer. Schwimmer. Yeah, David yeah. Schwimmer. Schwim dog. Played a ca- the captain in that that was like the biggest piece captain of shit. Oval. Oval. <laughs> right. yeah. Was that his name? Did oh. I get that right? I don't know, but we're about to find out. In basic, right? They meet him. In yeah, basic. yeah. And he was just like a total cheese dick. And then he made he made a uh, reoccurring. He, he came back later, and he was still a fucking dork. And uh, yeah, but yeah, so he, many he actors that I there. yeah. The, I mean, every, so many people yeah. took off from that. God, I'm surprised Dale you died. weren't in that. To be honest with you. Well, you know, I I met with him on that, but uh, Spielberg told me that he didn't want to use guys from Private Ryan in it. So. Oh. That makes sense. Uh, Sobel, yeah. Sobel, Captain Sobel. Yeah, that's right. So, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I used to always call my Captain Sobel. He, used to he was him. such he a douche. He would piss him off so he was badly. such a douche. He's like, he wanted to fucking beat me up. The only other good cast, they, they, as good as casting as they did for that, was in 13 Hours with the Chief of Base. Because him he coming from, great. that dude coming from, uh, was it Suit? It's a lawyer. It's a lawyer show. Oh, was, was it, it suits? suits? Is it no? I don't think he was in suits. It might have been white collar, something yeah, like that. All yeah, those yeah, USA yeah. shows are the same. Bag. He's such yeah. a douchebag. Yeah. They're like, let's get a big douchebag to play this part. He was great. <laughs> he was yeah. great. Yeah, he was great in the movie. Yeah. yeah, we can't make yeah. him audition. Just give him a role. Yeah, yeah. just give him a role. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He's such a great. dick. Imagine what a uh, 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 Manila folder would act like in real life that's you go <laughs> amazing perfect so uh you said oz was on the show or tig was on the show uh well, or they we, haven't been on the show now mark geist, geist has been on the phone yeah uh, been on the show and uh i think you know any of those guys would come on like you guys are friends with uh, uh chris pronto though right we're friends with the, i'm i mean i worked with all those guys so I, yeah and then glenn doherty was a really good friend of mine mm. we did our last he his trip before that one was in Afghanistan, and we were both on that trip. And uh, we did we did several trips in Afghanistan together. He's a fucking great guy. <clears throat> I mean, all those guys are good dudes. But Glenn was I was I was closer to Glenn than uh, the other guys. Mm. So he was a good dude. Mark. Yeah, and Max, Max, uh, you and I met after the Great Raid, which was another war movie. Um, no, I don't think you guys have met. Is what he said. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> well, exactly. Which, which Max, one was the Great Raid? Tell me. Which one Max can't one? remember what he did an hour oh, shit, ago. That, that was. It's called a senior moment. Is what that, that was in uh, <clears throat> Japan, right? Was that on? It the was Great uh, Raid? the uh, Cabana Tuan Death March. Yeah, that that's right. right that's right. Be, that was yeah. great. That was another fucking great movie. Yeah. Man. God, that was a long died. shoot. That was a long shoot. You guys were there for Where like six that? months we or something were there crazy in Australia, right? Six months in Australia. Wow. Yeah. And, uh, but yeah, what a, I mean, what a story. A ton of problems. A ton of problems. The movie came out great. It just, you know, the, there was a, a shift in ownership of the studio when it was going to get released and it, you know, that happens to films and they just fall by the wayside, but the... But the film came out great. And it was a great cast, and yeah. James Franco was in it. Yeah. Oh my god. Yeah. yeah. Hey, will you will you answer this Franco question for me? Because yeah. uh, look, uh, Clay Crawford's obviously been on our show numerous yeah. times. Yeah. He told me a story about Franco, uh, who had injured feet in that, and it was bandaged. His feet were were always bandaged. Yeah. Is it true that he made crew members carry him around because he wanted to be no. in character and not? Did Clay say that? <laughs> yeah, no, you told me that. it wasn't true. No, <laughs> come on. Did he say that? It's <laughs> amazing. <laughs> I mean, it, look, it, maybe I didn't see it, but uh, but uh, you know that 
he w- he was uh he, you know he actually stepped up in the in the uh in the training, you know, because you do a war film, you, there's always this kind of two Dale two Dye week school. kind of Dale died <laughs> boot camp that that everybody does, and you know everyone eats MREs and we sleep out in you know little you know tents and you know it's like, but but it, it it's good because it unfucks the actors. The thing you know, I had already been through a Dale Die boot camp, so when we were shooting uh, that film. Uh, I would low crawl out, you know, at night and go meet up with the armors and like send dudes out for beer and fucking apple pie and, you know, <laughs> and have my own little party yeah. off to the side. So, uh, but yeah, that was a crazy shoot. And then you heard about the, uh, the, the guy uh, getting decapitated. Yeah, man. That we were, fuck, we were, yeah. we, we were what? shooting. An extra got decapitated. Yeah. An extra. Yeah. And we, what happened? We, we, we got off work. And uh, he got on his motorcycle, oh. and we were in a bus behind him. And mm-hmm. you know, we were out in the country uh, in Australia, and the roads are really windy, and you can't see shit. And you know, and uh, this kangaroo, uh, a, I mean, massive kangaroo, jumped out in front of the bike, hit him. This and he's right in front of us, and then a uh, an oncoming car hit him and took his head off. And uh, yeah, did you guys and, try and put it back on? We it, it just didn't. doesn't, doesn't no doesn't no. Like <laughs> no. But I <laughs> so I heard this the studio so did didn't the studio bury him in a, in uniform? Uh, I think it was Weinstein who 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 had requested that or the family or some. He was really proud about working on the movie. He was um, very proud about the film. Yeah, uh, we, yeah. We were at the funeral. I don't remember. I don't remember uh, that. But uh, Max, you don't remember I anything. I, I, I really. I, I love I, I, you. I, I, yeah. You're just driving. Who was this guy? A kangaroo yeah. <laughs> takes your head off. Like, come on, I don't remember. That. Ross, have we met? Man, I finally yeah. got this movie I really wanted. <laughs> I know. I mean, crazy <laughs> kangaroo has something else to but, say but about it. How many times have we heard that story, though? I mean, that's, the kangaroo that kangaroo happens a, a lot. No, it's it's <laughs> <happens> <laughs> all the time. one of the top yeah. four yeah. leading causes of death. More than more so than AR-15. Before my girls go to school, I'm like, be careful, kangaroos. You might get decapitated. <laughs> you might get decapitated. Yeah. You never know. We should ban kangaroos. Yeah. You never. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah. So, so Max, as you're churning along throughout your acting career, um, the next time I saw you after that, because we uh, hung out a few times, you would book the unit and then bought like a fucking huge, awesome house. Um, it, that's when I was like, "Holy shit, this is TV money." Did you? It, were you starting to feel like, "All right, this." This is I'm starting to really fucking make it at this point when you book the unit. Well, the the I bought a ranch, like a small ranch property in in central California, but I but that was um leading up to the unit, my wife and I when we were in LA, uh we were on my patio <clears throat> drinking margaritas and uh and we got just plowed and decided to sell the house. And uh, and I called my realtor and I was like, Frank, listen, we've already talked about it. Just put it on the market, list it for this much, blah, 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 blah. He goes, okay, okay. So the, then tomorrow we wake up the next morning and we're like, oh, my God, did we call him? And uh, and so he, I, I went, look, you know, we're going to have a couple months to, let's just sit on it. Let's let it. So he listed on the MLS and we were in a bidding war like the minute it hit the MLS. So we made money on that. We moved to Italy. And then came back and I got the unit, but I bought the property uh, from the house selling <laughs> and, but the unit, I did feel like, you know, I mean, it look private Ryan. I, I kind of felt like, Oh shit, here I go. Like, right. um, the unit was very, I didn't, uh, mammoth. I was, a, I, I, you know, was a, I was a big fan of, and Sean Ryan who had done the shield was, was, uh, show running. So yeah, I knew it was going to be high profile. Um, I didn't know that it was going to be as well received as it was uh, by the military. Um, and I think the first two seasons are probably the best. But we had, you know, we had one of the original unit guys on uh, as a tech advisor. And who is that? Yeah, Eric Haney. Oh yeah, oh, yeah. yeah. Who you know looks like a has scientist. Created friends and enemies, but you yeah. know, but he. Uh, but, you know, I mean, he sat us down at the beginning of that shoot and said, hey, look, you know, we're, we're not going to make a mockery of what uh, these guys do. 
uh, you're going to train, you're going to get it right, and I'm going to be on your ass, you know, every step of the way. And so, right. you know, if you if you if you if you want to take this ride, if not, jump off, you know. So, uh, so yeah, I'm you know, look, I'm proud of that show, and and it really kind of upped my my uh, you know base of friends in the military. How many seasons did that run? Uh, we did four seasons. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I'm surprised they didn't go more, to be honest with you. Yeah, they, you know, the network got involved. They fired Eric. Uh, they brought on another uh, CAG guy and uh, Pete Blaber. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And, uh, and you know, and then they got involved in the storylines and it got a little cheesy. So, you know, but but the other thing is like right at the end of that show, the war was really unpopular in right. Hollywood. And then we got Bin Laden. Right. And we were like, oh, well. Yeah. How many, how many, how many seasons do you think SEAL Team goes? I've never oh, seen boy. it. Oh, boy. Have you, have you I think seen it's it? Gonna, I think it's going to go five, six. Is it good? I, yeah. I did too. Yeah. Yeah. It, well, well, I think it'll the, go five or here's six. Here's the thing yeah. about SEAL Team. For me, it's boring because it's too real. <laughs> really? <laughs> really? For the first time ever. It's, it's so real. I mean, the first few episodes you see, they're actually showing the arguments and the planning process of... Of when you're going to do, and you're like, you, 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 got, you know, I just get frustrated. I'm like, yeah, there's always that motherfucker over there putting a wrench in the fan, not wanting to get shit done. <laughs> I didn't know it was that good. It's pretty good, is it? Yeah. No. I yeah, people it. people dig it. Um, you, hey, Max, you, you know I got to ask you about Fifty Shades of Grey. You were in the franchise. Yeah. <laughs> you don't want to talk. Well, about I don't really. 50 I don't really open the conversation with that one. But yeah, no, you know. <laughs> I mean, look. Here's what happened. That you know, I, the it was the same producing team from Captain Phillips and my buddy Dana Brunetti said, "Hey, you want to come and and do you know this uh, this trilogy, uh, Fifty Shades of Grey?" And I didn't know anything about it. And uh, you know, and it it, it was the smallest role i've probably ever done but uh the fans are so rabid oh uh, around the world by the way not just here but around the world around they love the that world fucking series yeah, yeah it's crazy uh so yeah so i did do that <laughs> but that's a that's a big deal like you get a franchise like that those residuals will come in for the rest of your life yeah that's been really good to me <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah yeah that's been good yeah. what's uh what's what's something else on the horizon that you're looking forward to um do you have any more projects that you'd like to direct yeah so so the company that bought uh our sergeant will gardner uh, uh do you want to no, talk no. about it? Yeah? yeah okay uh they they offered mike and i kind of a three picture deal so we're nice. gonna we're gonna do uh the first one, all action, uh, like a, a, a fr- small franchise. So, so we'll do the first one next year, probably around June, May. Yeah. In uh, New Mexico. And go back to New Mexico, get my crew back, and, and, uh, and do that. So they, that's for me to direct and star and Mike to produce. And, uh, and then uh, I, there's a couple movies that, that aren't solid yet, but that look like uh, I'm probably gonna go do a biker movie in Colombia. i've never been to Colombia, so i'm gonna wow that in january yeah I, and that uh, that's gonna happen in january yeah holy shit yeah. um like I, I heard cartagena is a blast and I, i've heard they they've cleaned it up a little bit i heard the coke's amazing there but that's about it <laughs> <laughs> I, i've never I, I i know nothing about the country but i'm excited to go <laughs> I thought you were going to yeah. see what happens. I thought you were going to check What could out. go wrong? I don't know anything about the country, but I'm excited for the cocaine. <laughs> yeah. Wow. You're going right. there. Right. We're really excited for the cocaine. It is pure there. It is absolutely pure there. <laughs> yeah, we have, a, we have a biker movie we've been kicking around. Do you? Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Wow. Before we get into Two Wheels of Loneliness. Um, you want to talk that, about That's what it's called? Two movie. Wheels yeah. of Loneliness? Yeah. yeah it's, it's, it's an all Amen. gay. It's the first ever all gay biker movie. Yeah. Wow. Wow. <laughs> Jared pay, Jared plays the Matt's wife of husband. Matt, yeah, yeah. Oh, the, the yeah. husband of husband. Matt yeah, yeah. that gets pregnant and has their baby. <laughs> yeah. I'm pregnant during the movie. It so doesn't sweet. matter. It just matters who you identify as, yeah. right? There's actually, bio- <laughs> biology doesn't play any factor. A lot of deadlifting. Yeah. yeah. In the movie. A lot of deadlifts and motorcycles. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So, so you said before we get into Two Wheels of Loneliness, what were you going with? You want you want to talk? No, about I, I want to talk. No, I want to talk about Will Gardner. I want to talk about the your latest project. I want to because I don't 
know a lot about it. Yeah. I, I should have read a little bit more. So here so I'll give you <clears throat> the, 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 the spiel. You can chime in. So uh, the, the the intention behind the film, you know the the the, the I was inspired to make this film after having gone uh, to Iraq. And, uh, you know, when I, <clears throat> when I got there, one, I, I couldn't believe uh, the, the, uh, the age of our troops, like yeah, right. so how young, young they, they were. were. I mean, yeah. fuck, dude. Like, they're, you know, I just, I remember getting off this plane going, oh, my God. And, and then at the end of the second trip over, I really <clears throat> started to regret uh, that I didn't choose to serve. And so... Uh, I met this army ranger over there that had survived a couple IEDs and uh and was at one point we were communicating when I had come back by email and he was you know he just kind of was like dude I'm having such a fucking hard time here and I can't sleep and I'm you know having anger issues and I, and I know if I go forward and ask for help you know they're going to you know, I'm just it's just a fucking shit show. right exactly they'll throw me to the rear and and so you know I didn't have any answers and, uh, but what I did, uh, it did inspire me to kind of get involved because this was sort of early on and, and, uh, you know, I knew that this was going to become a major, uh, issue, the TBIs in, in the U S. And so I wrote this movie, you know, with the intention of like creating or, sus- or, or raising and, and, uh, sustaining a level of awareness that's not front page news anymore. And, um, and raising money for charity if I, if I was able to. And, uh, you know, so we're giving 30% of our profits to, to Warrior's Heart, which you guys yeah. are familiar with. And okay. uh, it gets 10 and then 10 to Gary Sinise Foundation and 10 to uh, Higher Ground, which is a charity out of uh, Idaho. And they have a, a base in L.A. too. I know them. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah. Yep. And they do great work. And, you know, and all three of these, uh, or, you know, organizations get, yeah. Uh, their funding or their assist, you know, money to veterans and Monty, right? Monty yeah. Heath runs out. Yeah, he's a, he's a friend of ours too. Yeah, we're gonna go yeah. out actually after the show. And small world, my wife's cousin is a counselor up there as well. Oh, cool. Yeah, so Monty's a friend of ours. My wife's cousin works up there. Oh, right so, on. Yeah. yeah, small world. Is it coming out in theaters? Yeah, so it it comes out in theaters and simultaneously on uh, video on demand. Uh, January the eleventh. Okay. Correct. So yeah, you, we're gonna we're gonna delay this, aren't we? We're gonna push this. The big yeah, 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 yeah. We're gonna, we're gonna for sure. For big great. Right. Yeah, we'll, yeah. yeah we'll, and we'll we'll put this out right before the movie comes out. Obviously, yeah. um, how many theaters did you guys end up getting, and what was your distribution company? Yeah, uh, Cinedime's our distribution company, and we're in, we're gonna be in fifteen cities, fifteen of the top twenty six markets. Uh, we'll know those cities on Monday. So yeah, excited about that. And then also you'll be able to, you know, on direct TV, you can say in theaters now. That's where yeah. you'll find us uh, January 11th for the first couple of months. So you can either go to the theater or watch it on your home theater. Nice. Right. That's great. But they're, they're you know, the company's really behind it. And, and it's a it's a great uh, home for the film. And, and, you know, they have a big PR firm doing a bunch of push and so what so what's it about though like what, what's the story well it's it's about a veteran that uh when you meet him uh is displaced and uh and he uh borrows a harley davidson right and uh and sets across the country to kind of uh reinvent his his life and purpose and find his son uh lay some 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 memories to rest and you know uh but it, it it's it's a it's it, there's there's comedy in the film. Mm-hmm. There's a really solid social statement. It, it, it you know and it packs an emotional punch, and I think that it it will leave uh, viewers inspired uh, to help out and uh, you know and get involved. And you know and and the thing that 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 we've created, it, which I'm very proud of, is that when you when you use a movie to give back to charities. You've done all the groundwork. All right. you have to do is watch the film. All you right. have to do is buy a ticket, right. and a portion of it's going to veterans. Yeah, you're watching them. You're helping. Oh yeah, that's all you have to do. Is just, people want to see it. Yeah, but you're gonna people are gonna see it anyway. And then you know, and then uh, they're you know, on the back end, veterans are benefiting. And I think Mike and I like would love to uh, in success. You know, get the press involved when when we give back. 
and let more people see Hollywood giving back and right. more people seeing uh, vets benefiting from, you know, uh, the efforts of certain performers. And, and, you know, and I think that's important. Yeah. So. Well, Man, that's awesome. And, and there's such a negative narrative, I guess, narrative out there from Hollywood and military veteran. I think there is a veteran uh, slash military negative um, atmosphere, but I don't think that's the case. Like you mentioned earlier, I really don't. I think it's just a couple of bad apples that are kind of directly associated with. Um, I don't. I wouldn't even say it's anti-veteran. It's political. Uh, you know, it's political. Yeah, it's, it's like political. It, people assume that if you support the military, that you're on the right. Right. You know. That's what they. That, that's what they, yeah, in that's Hollywood. What that's what they assume. Mm. Which and, is crazy. Which right? is crazy. It's like the Democrats need the 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 military as much as right. you know the Republicans do. Like, and we've had this discussion, and and you know uh, that we really uh, wa- we don't side one way or the other in the film, and right. and uh, it's really about soldiers. But you know, I mean. I do agree with you. I think that there are a lot more. Pe- I think there's people that are afraid to come out and and actually really show support right. for fear, which is crazy. Because it's crazy. well, it, yeah, I mean, you and know, I think that's one of the things that we try to do in the film. That this really is about veterans. That if you walk and see walking down the street and you see a homeless guy, that that man or woman might have served your country. You know, so don't just walk on by and and really weigh, raise awareness to it. You know, and you should be able to say, hey, you know, a lot of people talk about the VA and about helping our veterans, but to sort of what we were talking about 20 minutes ago, nobody's really, do- or very few people are really doing things. So let's, right. let's put our money and our efforts and our work in, into it and, and sort of make a, make a difference. I mean, right. we, do, we do bring the VA up. I mean, and I, I know a lot of people that have had a great experience with the VA, but I know a lot of people that haven't. And you know it's a uh, it's a bit of a of a, a flawed system yeah. that needs you know will need constant improvement. But well, yeah, th- you know it's a it's a it's a government entity, right? So mm-hmm. it's it's full of government bloat and incompetence. And I'm mm-hmm. not saying all the government activity is incompetent. It's just it 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 has a a layer of incompetence, and it moves like a, a oil tanker, right? Mm-hmm. It's not an agile mechanism. I think it's very VA hospital dependent, but it it does have to, it has a lot of room to improve just yeah. across the board. But I think that stems from, from my perspective, that's people uh, within America that are not being proactive and holding their, their uh, elected officials accountable for their actions, which right. is, you, you know, we didn't, at that point, I, I didn't elect my official to send me to war. I was, I was, I was a little bit young, and, and ultimately, I think a lot of us were like 18 to, I was a little mm-hmm. bit older. But now we've been at war for almost two decades. Yeah. And we're you, still losing guys. <clears throat> no. For I, what? Still losing for guys. For what? Yeah. yeah. Fighting. And a good friend three, of mine yeah. who was killed, what, four days four ago? Four days ago. Uh, he had been blown up in Afghanistan before and spent almost a year and a half in TBI recovery before he was cleared and he had to lobby to come back on active duty. He came back on active duty, went back in as a, an active duty special forces guy. His name was Eric Iman. Uh, he had been in the Marine Corps that. before that. Uh, he had been on the invasion of Iraq in the Marine Corps. Uh, he had deployed again to Afghanistan in the Marine Corps. He deployed with SF. He'd been blown up almost two years of recovery, then lobbied to get back in act, on active duty, came back in on active duty, had another couple rotations, and was ultimately killed. But this is two decades crazy. of war fighting. Yeah. And the VA's problems directly stem, and, and this is just my two cents, they directly stem from a, a, a lack of accountability, and that has to come from the people demanding more from their right from their representatives right. because they're the people that are pushing guys into harm's way mm-hmm. it's not like the soldiers are deciding like hey mm-hmm. we want to go fight this war and i think that's sometimes what people think they're mm-hmm. like these warmongering military guys they, like hey dude they're, they're taking yeah, orders that's yeah. yeah. right. yeah. no, yeah. that's that's not the way it works yeah. man and 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 there is this this idea especially when we look at like democrat and republican that one is war or is more war hungry than the other. And it's right. like, no man, it, that's two decades. That's 
two terms, two terms, and yeah. then we're on another one yeah. here. So yeah. we're equally responsible for the deaths of these men, right. whether you're Democrat or Republican. But now we have to take care of them. We we can't just approve these wars. Send, send and, and you say men like yeah, kids exactly. I was just going to say that they're you know, children. They're children. They're eighteen. Their their brains aren't fully developed. They're eighteen years old. Yeah, they don't have fully developed brains. They're going overseas. Yeah, getting blown up and shot at, driving around in you know armored vehicles mm. with. Not, With not an knowing whether or not they're... message, too. Because this is what I was talking to him about last night. If we were there for the goal that they tell us that we're there for, we're not going to prosecute the Green Beret that kills the fucking chief of police that was raping a little boy. Right. Are we there to help these people? Or are we there... Like, that's what I said. It's horseshit. I hate hearing... The, the whole, we have to assimilate to their culture. No, we don't. We fucking invaded them. Fuck their culture. <laughs> the whole reason we're here is because they're fucked up. And so I don't give a shit what their opinions are on, you know, us uh, having pornography or anything like that. It's like, fuck you. Like, we're in your country because you're fucked up. Well, it's just a layer. Like, you, you can't expect, a, a, and this is the expectation or the analogy, is like, you can't expect a lion to live in a cage with a chicken. That's, that's not a good position for the chicken mm -hmm. so you can't go hey lion i want you to act like a chicken and i want i want to give you some some chicken feed and you know what but don't eat that chicken mm -hmm. don't eat it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. don't do it mm -hmm. it's like man you, you're, you're sending a bunch of 18 year old kids with underdeveloped and when i say this this is just a a, a, a fact overseas that were trained for war because of the previous wars, a lot of it was cold. Look war that way and shoot. And, yeah, well, shoot. And, 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 and by the way, like there was a point in this in these two decades where we were just taking kids and throwing them into basic, and then throwing them on yeah. the front lines. Yeah. Like trained. Well, you're, you're talking about there are some instances where you're forty weeks from start to finish, and you're on the soil. Yeah, yeah. Right. You were you were in high school forty weeks ago. Right. You know you were you were banging your girlfriend and right. driving your shitty car right. and now you're and now you're in a in a country with yeah. a bunch of men when i say that you're fighting men mm. and those guys might or might not have an education level above Third fourth grade, grade. Yeah. right right <laughs> and the expectation is is that you guys are going to go out come back and you're going to be great don't right. worry about that. Yeah. I want you we to got you. It. We yeah, got yeah. you, we got buddy. You. No, 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. no, 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 no. You can be good. You can be good. Hey, you can be good. be professional. Yeah. Wait, no. what? <laughs> we want you to assimilate back into society with little to no problem. You were right. we well, by, and by, and by the way, like, you know, this is a volunteer military. Yes. It's like, if you don't take care of your kids when they come back then where is the incentive to vote to, to enlist in our military right. and by the way like both sides of the political line if you you know if you don't uh <clears throat> appreciate having a military let's remove it for a day <laughs> yeah. let's yeah, see what happens yeah. you know yeah. let's say in the same with the, the first responders has you never, know has never experienced an occupation and i think that spoils them Dude, it, 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 and the same with first responders and co yeah. you know cops. Like take the take the police, take the force, police force away. away. Take them away for a day, yeah. and let's see how we do. Yeah. You know, yeah. if you don't, you know, and it's just, you know, uh, yeah. But but without you know organizations like these three charities that we're giving to, uh, the situation would be grave. Grave, and it and and you know the numbers. Uh, you know, I don't. Uh, they're out there. Uh, you guys are probably aware, but you know, they're sobering. I mean, there's, there's been. Is it still twenty two people a day? I think it, I think we're somewhere between twenty and twenty two suicides yeah. a day. You know, there's at any given moment fifty thousand uh, homeless veterans on the streets. Mm -hmm. There's, uh, you know, been over three hundred thousand cases of, of war related tra traumatic brain injuries. Mm -hmm. uh, and and here's here's an interesting fact: is that in two thousand and fifteen. Uh, there was an inspector general's report that st that that stated that there uh, over I want to say three hundred and eight thousand, but I could be wrong. Uh, I believe it was three hundred and eighty thousand deaths of of soldiers awaiting pending health care claims. Mm -hmm. These are guys in the system, yeah, that that just can't get to the help, you know, and it's but, uh, sad. And that, and that's I guess one of my points, which is when. When we're sending men and women off into harm's way, there's a cost, right? There's, there's the physical cost of knowing that people are going to lose their lives. Mm. There's the financial cost of the deployment itself. 
but then they haven't done their jobs. And that's where the accountability factor comes in is what are the post effects of deploying people into harm's way and how much is that going to cost? And that's the mm. problem is Americans don't want to pay the, pay the bill after they don't. Right. It's, it's kind of like I want to eat when for they free. Come home. Yeah. Right. I want right, to eat right, for right, free. Right, and it's right. like, no, there, there, ain't no, there ain't no free lunches here. No, and then they place the blame so you, on them, though. Right. They yeah, place and then the it's blame like, ah, you're the soldier fucked up. Hey, yeah, right. yeah. Hey, you can't come here and be angry. You can't come home and be angry. And like, I was a fucking murderer for a year. <laughs> yeah. Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? <laughs> yeah. What do you think's going to happen? Yeah. 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 <laughs> Sadly, one of the things. Hey, non developed brain, let me send you out overseas, get shot at, or consider yourself to be dead every day of your life for a year uh, and come back and I just want you to be a normal guy. Yeah, you know? Just forget about it. Sit in this cube. Just forget about it. Wait a year for, a pl- you know, and even when I was going through the VA process and I was talking to the, the assessment, the person that's assessing, you know, your rating. Yeah. I'm like, <clears> I broke my back. I, I broke my hand. I broke, you know, I've, I've done like multiple broken bones. I was like, I've, probably and it was it was assessed that a major like 40 percent hearing loss in my right side and the the va was trying to claim that it was from non-military related oh, hearing God. loss and i was like i don't do anything else in my life like i don't hair i don't loss? like hearing, uh, hearing loss. oh hearing yeah. i thought you said hair i loss. said ear loss i think <laughs> but non-military related hearing loss yeah. and i was like i don't have I've never had another profession, actually. There's, it's like, well, what do you do recreationally? And I was like, that's like mm. a fucking week, a, a year. Are you crazy? No. Like, like we're, we're shooting machine guns and using explosives, and we're around helicopters all the time. Like, there's yeah. no other reason why I have, in my right side, by the way, it's very, it's very noticeable on my right, right. side because I, I'd always have my, yeah, yeah, I'm right. I'd always have my earplug out on one side because... Right. I needed to be able to fucking hear or right. I'd rip a cup off as we all know, just like I did there. So I could fucking hear. Right. And she was trying to, the VA was no shit, their position on it until I, I had to, uh, I had to amend the, <laughs> or fight for it. It's like, there's no other, there's no other reason for this. No. Yeah. And they continued it and they, they, they want a nickel and dime you. It's like, man, it's so ridiculous. I'm not trying to, this isn't this isn't a bidding war for my health issues, man. Like I'm not. I'm yeah, not trying you to should, get into you a bidding war. You should be getting red carpet. Yeah, that's healthcare. what it is. You shouldn't be you shouldn't be fucking negotiating yeah, for yeah, healthcare yeah, yeah, at this yeah, point yeah. or a rating. It's like I jumped out of planes. I was a three, you know. And when you look at the, even just the service of men, it's like yeah. you volunteer to be in the military. Yeah. Then if you're in special operations, like you volunteer again. And then you continue to volunteer over and over and over again. It's like more dangerous and dangerous shit. Yeah, more dangerous (laughs) and more dangerous. And then it's, you know, you're volunteering to jump out of planes and shoot fucking heavy weapons. I'm a jumper. And all of this shit. It's like, man, this like I'm a volunteer. Don't don't fuck me. Like I'm 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 volunteering multiple times to do what we like to do. But it's also in the service of the country. I'm just only referencing my experience with it. But I'm like. Man, if you guys aren't willing, and I say that in the, in the, as general American society, if you don't want to pay for these wars, you have to fucking hold people accountable yeah. and get them out. Yeah. So we, at least we're not going into more harm's way, creating more men that have men and women that have health problems issues when they come back. Yeah. It's like, gosh. Hey, here's here's a here, this is really kind of amazing. Um, so the, we there's there's a a major role in my movie that we were going to cast out of L.A. Mm-hmm. And we had, you know, some namey actors that, that I was kind of ready to pull the trigger on and, and, and Mike had agreed on. And, uh, and the local New Mexico casting woman said, you got to meet this actor, Luis Bordonada. And uh, he's amazing and, you know, this and that. And I was like, okay. So he put himself on tape and he sends in this tape to play a Marine that's an amputee. And, uh, and it was great. And so I, we, go, we go to New Mexico and we meet him and he walks into the office and we read and, and he's, you know, we're just completely fucking blown away at this, at this guy who we think is a local actor. But at the end of this audition, he says, hey, you know, um, just so you know, like, this is my story. Like, my entire family's military. I served. I was in the army. Um, I jumped out of a plane. My chute got tangled. I fucking bounced. He hit the ground. 
and th- and he came walking into the into the uh, you know the <laughs> office, and uh, and he said, you know, uh, it took me uh, ten years to get ten percent benefits. This right. is a guy that hit the ground from yeah. you know what five thousand right. feet a hop and pop. Yeah. I don't know, and uh, and so when I called to give him the role. Uh, he was living out of his car. He was practically homeless. I mean, and he's phenomenal in this film. You know what I mean? <laughs> but he's one of the guys that we're trying to help, Real, you know? Right. Uh, it just, when you said skydiving, it made me think of that story. But, uh, but yeah, anyway. So there's a good cause behind it, yeah. and, you know, and I think it'll do I think it's good. right up all yeah. of our people's alley. I think they need to go see this movie. Yeah. Yeah, January 11th. It is in theaters and uh, on demand. Uh, this is the point in the show, Max, where we get to the drinking bro of the week. Mm. Is there anybody that has inspired you throughout your career uh, that you would like to give a shout out to and a, and a special thanks? Someone that helped you become the person you are today? Wow. You know, I had a uh, an acting uh, coach in New York City named Michael Howard who uh who has really uh been an inspiration uh to me for years and years and years and years so uh michael howard new york city that's awesome man yeah. jared's is randy quaid so yep. love um, randy quaid <laughs> mine is gary Busey. yeah gary Busey. Gary Busey. Jared, oh you mean gary a Busey. drinking bro <laughs> John oh, i misunderstood that. <laughs> can, can, can i nominate myself yeah. is that possible i'm nominate i'm nominating max <laughs> Yeah, exactly. After, after going one for one with me last night, uh, not very many bro. people can do that. Nah, so did you guys, did you guys go hard last night? T- tonight we crush it. it. Yeah, tonight we tonight we, we turn crush it, it. Tonight we're gonna turn it on. Oh, nice. Well, hey, Max, we appreciate you being on the show. Um, you're fucking awesome. Your your movies are amazing. You're one of the finest actors we have. Thanks, uh, and to the audience, please go and check out uh, Sergeant Will Gardner on uh, January 11th on demand um, and in theaters, 15 cities. Thanks, man. We appreciate you being here. Hey, Ross, really quick before you cut off, um, uh, the Instagram is Max Martini LA, and the only reason to follow that is because uh, after the movie, once we're into our profits. Uh, we'll be posting about the charities and the give backs and, and let people see that too. Awesome. Yeah. Hey, can we find you anywhere else? I didn't know you were a big social media guy. Well, you I'm know, not. You, I'm you, I, I'm you. a newbie, but it's uh, Max Martini LA and uh, and then, Mikey, what is the movie in Sergeant Will Gardner. It, I'll tell you right now, it's uh, Sergeant Will Gardner, the movie. G-A-R-D-N-E-R, the movie. I think those are the two best places. We're also on, on Twitter. It's the same, uh, Max Martini LA on Twitter, and it's uh, Sergeant... What is it on Twitter, Mike? Sorry. Oh, it's uh, Sergeant Will Gardner on Twitter, and it's S-G-T. Okay. Uh, but yeah, but but uh, please follow us because uh, I'm very excited about people seeing us uh, hand over to the charities. It's uh, the the movie's not successful until we get to that point. So. Awesome, yeah. awesome. Well, hey, thanks again for being here. Uh, nice for fun. Jared Taylor, Evan Hay, for Max Martini, I am Ross Patterson. Good night, everyone. <laughs>